the area of behavior medicine, there, there are some interactions that we're not even aware of. So for example, our circadian rhythm, our biological clock, is actually affected by the color of a light in our environment. So it's been shown that the amount of blue light in our environment can suppress uh, melatonin and can actually you know, keep us more awake, it prevents us from falling asleep. So that's why it's, it's not a good idea to expose ourselves or our children to, to a lot of screen time you know, right before bedtime. So that's just a simple example, but by changing, changing the color of the light in our environment, and this could be done automatically, and our, our smart home can do this, um, we can improve our mood, we can, we can have better sleep. And, then, uh, and this is just a simple example, but uh, um, there's a lot of people working on technologies to sort of help with human motivation, to help us exercise more, to, to eat healthier, to quit smoking, things like that. Um, so I work, one of the areas that, that, that I care about and work a lot with, as I mentioned before, is this, uh, substance abuse and drug addiction. It's a, it's a huge crisis here in the U.S. So in the area of um, drug addiction, we make systems that, in addition to helping to train people and give them the skills so they have alternatives to drugs, so they don't, off, they don't, they don't have to resort to drugs, um, we also make systems that help people deal with their craving and their drug addiction itself. So, for example, it's possible when, when someone has a, a drug craving, it's possible to present some uh, information either through the phone or through the environment that will help them think about what they're doing and reflect on that. So this is a lot of what cognitive behavioral therapy and mindfulness is about. Um, but we also know that the timing of this is critical. So, so if, you, uh, if you present it, the information too early, it, it, it's, it's, it's very weak. And if you present it too late, uh, you might, it might be past the point of no return. So, so, because you know, at, at a certain point, you know, people decide that they're going to use this drug, and then nothing you can do is going to stop them. So, the timing is very critical. But being able to model our behavior and, and model what's the best time to intervene and provide this messaging, that's one that's one of the very active areas in, in behavior medicine today. Um, so that's one example. Um, Another example is uh, suicide. So as I mentioned, you know, suicide is, 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 is a big issue, you know, not only college campuses, but military veterans, for example. And suicide, you want to predict um, what stage is the person at. So once again, it's, it's being able to predict and, and time your intervention. So is this person just in the ideation stage, or are they more like in the planning and action stage? And, and you know, then, then you can intervene better. Um, so, because we don't want to make technology that sort of interferes, that, that's annoying, that disrupts our, what we do. But at the same time, you know, we, 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 when the problem is needed, when, when the technology is needed, we, we want to make sure that we do intervene so that we can make a difference. Another example of uh, behavior medicine is uh, radicalization. So, for example, um, the U.S. government is, is currently, you know, is actively looking at trying to understand people's behaviors and try to predict um, radicalization. So for example, you know, by looking at not, not just our social media, but our stress level and, our, and our, uh, you know, the use of our phones and, 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 and what we do at home, can you predict or can you detect when someone's behavior is, is becoming a little bit erratic or maybe um, you know, changing, doing something unusual? So, so this has many applications, so it's not just health, but security. And, and other, other areas of our life. And, and I think obviously understanding human behavior, understanding our thoughts and modeling this is, is enormously complex problem, but it's an active area of research and it's something that I think is gonna be a major area of research over the next 20 years. Because you know, our behavior is us and that's really, that's really what, you know, um, what defines us as, as humans and, and, and really integrating um, technology into human life is one of the ultimate things that we want to do.